Mm. Yeah, I mean, there will be a selection process for organizers and everything. Uh, I yeah. think currently it is going on. You can check the updates, follow the updates on uh, IATM Madras BS page. Uh, you have selected. Um... Anyone in this group? Uh, Hello. Yeah, yeah, please go on. I mean, you were saying something. It was not uh, audible. Sir, uh, uh are you in foundation level no 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 i'm in diploma i'm in diploma level i mean what is your doubt uh, do you join paradox in 2024 i think uh, june in june yeah 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 uh i mean rajat i can i think uh, you can just mail uh, iatm society i mean IT Madras regarding your doubts about uh, volunteers and all. Yeah, okay. I mean, you can uh, post a query here as well. I mean, we are here to uh, I mean, solve your doubts. Yeah, please go on. Okay. My another doubt is uh, if I want to participate in Paradox 2025 in music. Okay. Then oh, what is the process? process for it i mean soon uh, we will uh, roll out the G i mean registration forms for the event and uh, we'll declare uh, we'll uh, we'll finalize the events and all soon it will be happening we are under discussion uh, once everything is finalized okay. we we'll, we shall uh, share the information through mails and uh, whatsapp forwards uh, is there any fees no, uh, fees, registration fees for particular event is not there. Uh, there is a registration fees for the uh, whole event. Okay, how much? Uh, I mean, that act, that is not decided by us. So, and also we don't know uh, about that. As of now. Yeah, you're saying that then? Approximate uh, how much? Uh, Please, uh, we have to pay about that, Rajat. I mean, uh, we really are not sure about that. We'll be informed soon as well. Once we are informed, uh, we'll inform everyone in the music society as well as, uh, as, uh, as you told that you joined uh, production 24. Then, hello. Hello. Yeah, Rajat. Mm. Okay, leave it. Discuss on another topic. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, Uday. Hello. Yes, Satya. Yeah, am I audible? Yeah, yeah, you are audible. Is this is my violin audible. Bro, it's too loud. No, uh, could you put your violin or maybe put your laptop a bit far from the violin? Okay. Actually, I'm using a Bluetooth. Oh, okay, okay. No, uh, it's too loud. Yeah, it's too loud actually. Okay. How about now? Still, still. Okay then. Okay. Uh, I suggest you disconnect the Bluetooth. Uh, I mean, uh, use your computer audio and mic system. 
for me if you are using mobile phone you can use that as well what about now yeah it's a bit better okay yeah it's fine it's fine totally fine done done Uh, kindly tell me the brief introduction about this uh, session. Yeah, uh, uh, this session is about a talk uh, about Carnatic music. We introduce everyone to Carnatic music through violin as well as uh, Carnatic mandolin, and we shall have an uh, interactive session with the speakers of the of today. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Then let's just start. Um, Uday. Uday. Am I audible? Yes. Yes, Anana, you're audible. Yeah, okay. Can you hear my instrument? Pretty loud. Yeah, it's, it's pretty loud. Okay. Better? Yeah, good now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So good evening, everyone. Uh, we shall start the session by 7.15. Uh, please wait. I mean, we are waiting for a few more mem audience to audience members to join. Once they are joined, we shall start the session. And uh, thank you for joining for this session. 7.15. or 15? 7.15. No problem.
Yes, uh, yes, Subhash, just a sec. Uh, I'll share the link in a bit. You can use this link uh, and fill the form and then you you will be added to the Accord Society G space and you will be, I mean, you will be getting mails every now and then regarding event updates and every other update. Okay, then uh, we'll start the session now. Uh, good evening, everyone, and happy Sunday to you all. I think you have, uh, I believe you have enjoyed this Sunday uh, doing your favorite stuff. And uh, thank you all for joining this session. Also, I welcome you all for this session, uh, Strings of Tradition. This is the final episode uh, for the uh, series Music for Everyone. In this session, we are going to talk about Carnatic music and we will introduce you all to Carnatic music through violin and Carnatic mandolin. Uh, you might have he heard about Carnatic man mandolin, but I think this is the first time you are hearing it for the life. Yeah, so um, stay tuned. Uh, this is this is going to be a very interactive session, and I hope you enjoy this. Uh, for uh, for this session, the guest for the day is Satya. Satya, he is on violin, and we have Ananya. Ananya is on uh, Carnatic mandolin. Welcome Satya. Welcome Ananya. Yeah, uh, thank you. Satya is all yours. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you guys can turn on your videos. Yeah, yeah. Just a minute. Yeah. Yes. So um hello everyone. Uh, I'm Ananya, as I had mentioned. I will be explaining um, about my instrument and also Carnatic music in general. So Carnatic music, as you know, is the classical music of the southern part of India, where um, northern part of India mostly follows Hindustani music. And uh, the southern part of India, we have the Carnatic music, which is very widespread, especially around uh, regions of Karnataka, Andhra, um, Tamil Nadu and Kerala, it's very po popularly followed as a form of music, classical form of music. Um, most songs in the Carnatic music are uh, tend to be on the devotional side. Um, when when you see the comparison between um, Hindustani and uh, uh, Carnatic music, we find that Hindustani music is more on the um, it, like it portrays elements of romance and stuff um like to another person but um on the um in in the carnatic music it'll be more devotional like you'll find the same emotions but it'll be more devotional so um a brief this is a brief about carnatic music and i have been learning this instrument for the past 10 years now um i <laughs> i am trained under uh, my guru doc um Srimati UP Raju sir, Srimati U Nagavani ma'am and Sri UP Raju sir. I'm sorry. Um, so uh, that's about me. Satya, you can take. 
it thank god she explained almost everything okay uh hi guys satya here and um, first of all this is the first time i'm doing this so if i make any mistake please okay so i'll be here uh, today we'll just have a fun talk about uh, you know uh, carnatic violin first of all how many of you guys have seen a violin like something know about the violin nice uh, accord, uh, accord you know you you are the, you are the meet, you organize this of course you know accord yeah uh, i am pursuing uh, vidwat in uh, carnatic music so obviously you know. amazing 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 so today so i'm um, uh, okay there are judges in the group i guess okay uh, i'll be doing let me just show like what is uh, anything you have, you know about violin in general someone anything like what are, what does it consist what is this thing what is this thing uh, uh, i have been running western violin so oh, yes, yes yes okay super so you'll oh, be playing have... violin like this then yeah yeah i have it uh, right beside my table i've been trying it for a very long time but not my background so uh i mean you need to have the interest in that right yeah, yeah. it requires a lot of precision yes so basically like this is the bow i'll just start with the basics this is the bow so this with this we generate the sound how how do we do it very simple just pu pull it across this region okay but it needs lot of practice because initially you you won't know with which pressure you will be like you you need to play the violin initially it sounds like yeah something like that uh but with patience with patience it will get you will get used to it so basically in simple term this right hand is used to generate sound and the the variations of sound you can play it very loud you can play it very uh uh low noise or something this left hand is where we uh, change the a uh, pitch like for example in uh, carnatic music everybody would have known sari gama pada nisa it's the basic thing it's like in western who 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 told venkat you play western right uh, uh, yeah yeah they they have this do re mi fa something like ah uh, yeah we usually follow this uh, yeah do re mi fa sol yeah similarly we have uh, uh sari gama pada nisa it's like you have made in western you have major scale minor scale but in carnatic we have both in carnatic as well as hindustani we have raga more than hindustani music carnatic have a very systematic approach on this raga we have like we have set of rules we need to follow in playing some ragas not some ragas in every raga and we, we need to follow some rules so basically i'll just play this uh, very basic sarigama padanisa in uh, shankara varnam this is major scale in uh, in western terms so i'll be playing it in d so is it is it d major or yeah i think it's d major okay it's basically you with the left hand you you can uh change the pitch or change the note so how do we do it the shankar means music and music means day yeah <laughs> shankar <laughs> okay basically uh Uh, how do we say it? you have in western you have like scales like if it's a d sharp it's d in in uh, in carnatic we we say d is as the base uh, pitch as sa okay <laughs> ba okay ba base uh, uh, note is sa so we'll start with sa this is sa and This will be pa. Again, sa with the next octave. So this is be, this will be the very basic thing you will be learning in Carnatic violin. Just just uh, drag the bow smoothly across the uh, like uh, the region and you make the sound. This will be the very basic in first class. You will be learning this. Nothing else. So with the left finger, uh, left hand, we can actually change the pitch. for example we can do like this this is sir 
you can play even songs with it so this is the main concept but the there is always a catch you know you don't know where this swaram we, we call it swarams in uh, in in western they call it scales or something shankar please can you explain they call it scales or uh, swaram no 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 i i am not uh, teaching here <laughs> no he knows this <laughs> okay they call it scales we call it swarams for the particular shruti for example look i have a tambura right next to me can you guys hear it can you guys hear it thumbs up yeah so basically this is in d d okay 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 this is in d uh, uh d scale with the d scale we play sa we take the d as bass sa so sa unlike a uh, western violin we cannot play every single shruti in the same violin we need to change the tune so that is a Uh, drawback from west uh, in carnatic well, violin we need to change every time we change the pitch or the scale i um, i was playing in d if i want to play it in e i need to these are pair, screws which is used to change the shruti or pitch so i need to change it and yeah that is the main drawback of what i believe in carnatic violin in western it doesn't matter you just play change the fingerings and uh, Tuning. yeah exactly exactly we need to change the tuning yes. to add to satya in carnatic music there's the scale is very relative you can pick up any note and from there you can just calculate the distances and you can create a whole octave starting from any note right so um let's say for for today both of us have tuned um our instruments to d um so from d d will be the root uh note as you said shankar d will be the root note and starting from d we will be playing so the d will be our sa like our root sa and from there we have one octave upper and one octave lower so um in carnatic music in general people change the the scale in which they sing whichever is comfortable for their particular throats in vocal um carnatic music this is how they do it but for instruments we have to tune our instruments in the particular ranges that our instruments can handle there's a particular range of uh, scales that you can pull the string up to because string has tension if you pull it too much to a very high scale then there have been instances of strings breaking so that is one more uh, drawback of string instruments in general yes go on shankar no i wanted to know like so you said there is a difference in tuning the instrument right so uh, i don't know how violin is tuned mm, so so what you are trying to say is basically like i have four strings so if i don't hold use my left hand and if i play it open there will be a sound right so is it a different sound in western violin and the classical violin so what are the notes in the western violin and classical violin that's what basically i wanted to ask yeah in western they have like uh, e uh, e a d g the the tunes of each string will be different in carnatic we will tune it just for the uh, particular uh, shruti like if it's d everything will be in d uh, for example it's 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 d okay okay i got the it the root got is got d it. and ah. then you count um fifth note five, five notes yeah exactly so you have your first and fifth note in yes. all the open strings of a classical instrument yes. doesn't matter whether it is violin guitar because i've seen gokul also used to yeah. play guitar like that in in general carnatic all instruments in carnatic veena violin mandolin uh, you can take any string instrument for that matter it will be tuned in the same pattern so yes. which is why a lot in a lot of cases people that play veena have been able to play the mandolin too or people who play the mandolin can play on the carnatic guitar so since it's all the the way we tune our instruments are the same right so you tune it for root and the fifth note that is sa yes. and pa you will tune it in exactly. so in which order you will tune like all the four strings 
What? Uh, is it like first fifth fifth and first or first five first and one five, five one five one one five one five yeah in violin it's one five one five okay for mandolin we have we have the bass where you can tune it for three uh for two whole octaves so it's like one five one five one so if i have five strings oh five strings are there in mandolin okay right. so and violin the... has four mandolin has five so if i purchase a classical violin uh like a carnatic violin and if i just change the tuning it becomes a western violin there is no not much difference or if i want to purchase it i have to separately look for classical no, violin actually, what you need to do is you need to just change the strings that's it okay, so i have to just change the strings and tune it accordingly yeah tune it accordingly yes okay. understood thank you yeah yeah okay so uh, where is you can go on subhash yeah Uh, so you meant that if you want to play a song which is in D, for example, so your strings will be like D four, D five in that way. What I don't get you. Sorry. Uh, so you you said that uh, based on the scale you are playing. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, my terms which I will be using will be Western. But okay. Yeah. That's all. So uh, see. So if you want to play something in D scale, so you will be tuning your strings as a D four, D five, in such a way. I think so it like, will be tuned yeah, it, tuned as D A D A D four D five are like uh, one step up, one octave up D four yeah. D five is one octave up of D four. A basic it will be tuned D A D A because fifth of a D is A right so D A D A it will be tuned I believe. Okay. So we okay. we can choose the octave to which we tune it to again the octave which we tune it to depends on the um, instrument. You can't go for a very high octave. Yes. Uh. I mean, uh, what could be the reason? Like, uh, we are able to achieve everything on the same violin. Sorry. Uh, like in Western, we are able to achieve all the skills on a single violin, right? I think, uh, I, uh, like, probably for the West, if in Western violin, they don't accompany. You know, like they we have in Carnatic, we accompany for vocals or there are solo performance also, but we majorly violin accompanies the singer or uh, yeah, no singer or. Yeah, yeah, singer or uh, yes, yeah, just singer. So for that, I think this is the convenient thing because uh, instead of uh, changing the fingerings for every uh, every like shruti or something, because in Western you have this song would be played only in this scale. Uh, yeah. In Carnatic, it doesn't go like that. We can sing if a, oh. a guy with bass voice he can sing in B B, then with high pitch lady he can she can sing in. A or something, so we cannot be changing. Like then, we need to practice every song in every scale, which has very different fingerings, which is yeah. very different. So for for that reason, I guess I believe they have uh, invented such that uh, for a for a particular uh, shruti, we have the same as I mean like uh, same tuning. So for a uh, we don't like for a same song, we 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 have the same fingering for every tuning, every scale. Uh, so that's the reason they, I think yeah, because the pitch is relative, right? So uh, as Ananya told, pitch is very relative. So we cannot be changing the fingering every time for a new guy. So we change the violin with the same and play it with the same fingering. Yeah, yeah, got it. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Other... okay. Uh, you go ahead. I like I have got. I have many questions. Like I have my violin holding up right next. Oh, I got many. <laughs> many other questions. I'll ask. Try my best. I'll try my best. Yeah. To answer all of your questions. So, any other doubts or? Okay. No. Okay. Yeah. So basically, I told you the basic thing is right hand is used for producing noise, noise, sir. music, uh, sound. Okay. <laughs> noise is not the right term. <laughs> sound. So with the left hand, we in Carnatic as well as uh, you know Western, we change the in Western we change the scale. In Carnatic, we change the swaram. Scale is swaram. So if it's a, it is in D, we change it with our fingers. We, we, so the main thing is uh, the uh, why uh, violin is the hardest instrument is that unlike uh, mandolin or veena, we don't have frets or okay okay Ananya, don't look at me like that. We, in unlike mandolin, we don't have 
the the i mean the frets to identify where we should place this varam it's all muscle memory you have to if it's this is pa that's it you need to place it exactly there below little bit below or little bit above you get an upper swaram which is not the swaram you want upper swaram means like uh, it's a, a off the scale or off the pitch something like that off note off note uh, in carnatic it's off note in western of the scale or something i don't know it's off note only off note only say so basically that is one of the hardest thing like that is one of the reasons why violin is very hard you don't know where, like exact place to finger it you just have to go with the muscle memory so i think this is all about the basics of violin i would like i wanted to explain ananya can not start with mandolin yes okay yes thank you um so moving on to mandolin mandolin originally is a western instrument just like violin um but again the the one i am holding right now has been modified to be able to play um carnatic music on it right so um initially the original mandolin that was there had six strings um so that's why you can see that there are six keys over here but this key is not used because we have only five strings on the instrument again um as mentioned before the tuning goes like um in western um terminology it will be 15151 and in um carnatic terms or like classical music terms it will be sa pa sa pa sa so i have three sa octaves and two pa octaves and um in the total i can accommodate up to um four octaves like in the last so you can hear is it audible yes yes there are four octaves of the same note that can be accommodated on this instrument um and like he said um mandolin has frets which can be used to identify where the notes have to be placed and this is pretty similar to an electric guitar i mean there are people that play um carnatic music on the electric guitar as well um so it's very similar you use a pick or um a pluck drum or a pluck whatever you want to call it <laughs> and um the string somewhere around this area we pluck it we use our left hand to play the notes we use only the index middle and the ring finger of your left hand we use only three fingers of the left hand to play because these are the uh, fingers that have the most strength we don't use our little finger and the placement the hand placement goes like this and you pluck a string and then so you press on the fret particular fret and then pluck the string in order to make the specific sound so in the, as he said the first class is always just open plucking it will be um let me show you it will just be it will be that's all you learn in the first class we just learn to use the uh use our left hand and our right hand so um Mm. and um so carnatic music is different from hindustani music in a lot of ways because as he said certain ragas have to be played in a very specific way we have a few certain signature phrases or signature sounds that belong to particular ragas and um, even um, in a, one particular um, song it can be played very differently on different instruments as well um on the violin because the techniques with which we play each instrument differ right there can be certain um techniques which we can use the fingers you can use the fingers differently in each instrument or uh, maybe you can the plucking can be different uh, so these are just things that are unique to each of the um instruments but this one what the same song can sound 
differently on sound in the sense the nuances or the phrases or the intricacies of the same song can be very different in vocal and in each of the instruments for example veena has like um okay what are the different types of ma mandolin uh there is just one mandolin uh, as far as i know because it's just the indian classical mandolin um this is purely electric because um let's say i have an amplifier here if i turn off the amplifier you can't hear anything that's that is the natural sound of the instrument so that's that's one thing maybe you can hear but if i go to a performance people won't be able to hear yeah there is only electric so this is one more disadvantage of this instrument i would say um, the only thing being you you will require it's not unlike veena or violin or other instruments it cannot be very naturally heard with a loud sound or any other percussion instruments as well it can't be loudly played without any uh, setup it requires a um, an electric output that needs to uh, go to um, a sound box or like you you need a, like a mic system or some amplifier in order to play this and in order for your music to be heard outside yes yeah, shankar no if it it has only electric for example if you take a guitar uh, there was no concept of electricity back then so there was acoustic guitar so in that point of view what i am thinking is a mandolin is a relatively new instrument is it so it's pretty new okay okay it is very new in fact uh, this version of the mandolin was designed by my guru that is so if if you can okay. if you can google um, mandolin yu shrinivas the mandolin that he would be holding would be different it would be black and red in color and that was one of the older versions of mandolin that were mm. used and this um is used this uses a different type of wood that is made okay uh, like with which it's made and okay. uh, the internal uh, the sound systems are all customized so mm. that's the thing you can't since this is also very rare and it's pretty upcoming it's not something that you can go to a music store and say i want a mandolin and you can buy so okay. it's since it's pretty rare at least in my school they place orders in bulk and it takes mm -hmm. around uh, a month or two sometimes even one year for you to you know manufacture one and get it okay yeah so um moving on those were the basics and uh, Mm. Satya, do you want to uh, go with? Like I just have uh, one. Like I had uh, add something to what Ananya said. Okay. Like I, I guess mandolin is electric. Uh, Shankar asked why guitar we can play without electricity, right? Like we can play chords on it, but we don't play chords on mandolin. The thing, the basically the reason why we need. Uh, the amplifier is, uh, I believe, like we the concept of gamagas come into play, because you cannot hear uh, her gamagas. You can hear her notes, but or even she can play chords and you can hear it, but you cannot hear the gamagas, the gliding that are going in mandolin. I guess, if I'm right, please uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Aranya. Like that's why we need, I I, I guess we need amplifiers just to uh, hear the gamagas and of the Carnatic music. right see specifically in in this instrument itself um i mean when i started off i didn't have an amplifier right and i used to have a lot of online classes uh, through skype or like calls or something sometimes so in those cases you can only hear the pluck so when when you pluck sounds so when you're plucking individual notes those are audible but however when you're gliding through the notes those are not easily audible in a very non electric setting okay let's say how much of that was audible 
okay nothing <laughs> no pretty much everything because uh, satya is not having earphones that's the thing <laughs> bro you can't expect no no i i did really call. hear everything you <laughs> but... can't expect a concert crowd to hear this okay yeah yeah that is true i agree i'm not right. denying that i just uh, said i heard it okay <laughs> i can practice by myself with an amplifier but if i'm going to go out and perform sorry i am not blaming anyone i'm just okay when you asked whether i heard it i just heard it i'm really sorry no no i am just trying to justify it ah uh, okay fine justification accepted thank you yes so um both the instruments have a western background how did they come to carnatic music so initially mandolin um as i said it was a western instrument um mandolin yu shrinivas was the first person that uh, brought about uh, mandolin as an instrument into the carnatic fraternity he um used to uh, sit with his guru since um guitar carnatic guitar was pretty um similar like similar to the mandolin right so the fret positions and uh, the positions of the notes are relative and since you can it is something that can be discovered on your own shrinivas sir he used to go to his guru his guru used to vocally um teach him the lessons and he used to by ear try to match the notes that his guru was singing on the instrument and um, also in general carnatic music involves a lot of listening it it is a major thing by ear a lot of the um phrases or the nuances of the ragas that i had mentioned before it is something creative very creative a lot of the carnatic music mus- musicians i would like to say that a carnatic concert is basically a bunch of artists coming together on stage and jamming because Amazing. none yeah. of them none of them in especially big artists i have never seen a single person rehearse It's always the newbies that rehearse and go, yeah. right? Manu Dharma. It's yes. it's purely creative and it happens on the spot, right? For uh, ragas, you have um, you have the raga alapana, which happens on the spot. You can practice in advance, but what you practice and what you play are not always the same. And usually, when whenever you have like a main artist and the side accompanying artist. So usually the accompanying artist is the violin and the main artist is the vocalist or veena or whoever let's say they play a set of phrases in a particular raga the accompanying artists will also play so it's not like they have prepared this beforehand they just have it practiced as a part of their musical journey and on the stage when you hear the main artist playing this raga you just have to go and accompany them and in a lot of situations the accompanying artist does not know what song the main artist is singing or playing in that cases if they just know the raga they pick up what the other person sings by ear and they play along with it so this is a quick this is generally how carnatic concerts work and uh, since it's a lot by ear it was easier for the for mandolin shrinivas sir to pick up um, nuances of carnatic music and easier to implement on the uh, instrument okay any other like um satya i did my part of the question how did violin come into carnatic music actually there are two theories actually one they say you know the king ravana you know some people say he created violin along with many other instruments but when i searched in google just half an hour ago um, i just came to know that violin came from west side in 19th century i don't know like east india company military band to uh, like brought violin to india and they played it to be frank as i don't know exactly who picked it and whose idea was it to like change it to carnatic but uh westerners brought there are two theories whichever you want to believe you can believe one is ravana created violin another one is westerners brought violin from 
uh, like western to india and from that we yeah that's what exactly i uh, ramana did that for veena but i uh, i have a document i just uh, like i just saw it and he uh, there it mentions ramana invented violin lot of other uh, instrument as well violin tabal uh, veena was before even because even uh, goddess saraswati you can see she has veena so basically veena is way before uh, ravana's era i guess so basically i'm not good at what the history says but yeah this is what i and all i know <laughs> you can always search it upon google you guys yeah <laughs> um, other... okay so adding on to that um now one may think that since our instruments are very classical or carnatic based we can't bring in nuances of western music well that is wrong because since the raga shankara barna like uh, the one that uh, shankar played in the beginning is the major scale of every um, note right so um, muthuswami dikshitar a popular composer of um, carnatic music has composed a lot of pieces which sound very similar to <laughs> satya's <laughs> what okay which sound very similar to a lot of western um, notes or like a western song um he created that as a series and specifically for kids to listen, to like sing and enjoy um those are called note swarams um the popular ones being shakti sahita ganapatem shyamale meenakshi and uh, things like that um those are small pieces that sound very fun but also sound very western but actually if you were to play shankarabarnam in a very carnatical or a very classical setting it would sound completely different um i will give you a glimpse of what shankarabarnam i mean a glimpse of what these notice for am sound like on the mandolin satya do you want to do one i'll do shakti sahita do you want to do shyamale meenakshi do you know maybe we can make it simple and just play the arohanas of maybe they can understand the difference because i played shankara varnam just like Yeah, I, I wanted to show that, like, it can also incorporate elements of Westernity, you know. Um, so I wanted to give um, a glimpse of notice for us. We can, uh, like, I don't that much. I don't know that much notice ones, but I can play like English notes. They they also sound. Right. English. Okay. I will do Shakti Sahita. You can do English notes. Done. Nah. Okay, so the scale goes like this. notice for us they there are about five or six of them and these are all a part of the uh, the first book that we have um it is it's called gana amrita bodhini i think <laughs> it is every carnatic musician to every carnatic musician no matter what instrument you do or what you no know, if you're a vocalist it is a staple so there are a series of lessons that you have to learn memorize and practice um even now we go back to a lot of our basics to revise 
um and uh, just you know refresh um our memories to so the introduction of talas is um so talas are like rhythms in western it's a uh, more of time signatures right you have um 4 by 4 and stuff 3 4 all of those are implemented as talas in carnatic music we have adi talam which is the basic 4 by 4 we have eight beats and the speeds vary if you have four notes per beat it is the uh it's the second speed if you have two notes per beat it's the first speed so it's usually um we we are uh, encouraged to practice all of our lessons in both speeds in order to be able to play faster pieces and stuff so talas are introduced in these um lessons called alankaras and uh, ragas we are introduced to ragas in this lesson called uh, geetam so if you go through that book um and follow the book meticulously preferably from start to finish you can master the basics and from there we move on to what's known as varnams where we have um specific ragas but we have a structure of a whole song you know we have a pallavi and anupallavi and then there is a charanam and along with a lot of swarams so my teacher says that if you master a varnam you can it is it is the equivalent of mastering that raga because if you have a song in that raga you can play kalpana swarams because of the mukta swarams that you learn the swarams that you learn in the varna you that can be used in kalpana swarams but whereas if you're going to do raga alapana the other pallavi and anupallavi those parts of the varnams can help you um build up your kalp your alapana raga alapana that you have in the beginning so a varnam is a is of course um I, when i learned i considered all of these as milestones in my musical journey um you know starting off with uh, sarli varsai janta varsai and all of those when i reached alankaras that was my first milestone when i reached geetam that was my second milestone and then when i reached varnams that was my third milestone and then when i moved on to starting to learn new krithis that is my next milestone so all of these small milestones felt like okay i'm progressing <laughs> so following that book or following this um order is usually what is done in a lot of carnatic schools um i believe that's how it is in violin also and then is it different do you want to say something uh, same thing but uh, i'm like she she is like a topper i am like a middle bencher like i didn't i didn't have any aim and all just i just go to class and just play everything whatever my teachers told me i didn't have the that that kind of goal kind of stuff but uh, since like if you want to start a violin now because i started violin when i was like pretty young so at that time we didn't know like where we are going we just learn these stuff but ananya knew it somehow but we just learn it learn these stuff and we just go like we just follow our guru's path um and oh, also now, no, wait, wait 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 yeah, yeah. now if you start violin or any new instrument our mind is now little bit smarter it 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 it, it uh, like what it makes a plan it makes a road like we have to finish this we have to finish that we have to finish go i would say you need to have that for, for uh, you need to know where you are going but don't take so much stress on you need to complete this complete that that will like hinder the you know the process of learning the you can enjoy the thing so i will say play it no uh, so that's why it's always better to learn under a guru for all these carnatic because they guide you so that you can enjoy the process and you can like stay at the present and know all the nuances and all the techniques uh, in its fullest so that's what i i would like to say and i i would like to add one more thing unlike western violin in carnatic violin as well as carnatic uh, carnatic music in general we have styles or we call it bani like what we like 
there are actually majorly there are five schools in for, for carnatic violin i belong to one school and if you like if you take a guy from other school he'll be playing differently okay my school is more kind of like a very majestic and classic very classical style of playing if you see others they played very differently like you can see like i'll just show this like i'll play shangra barnam in in my school style and i'll just play in plain notes for example this is someone who would play from other school so what we will play is like and see the difference like some play some pay, play like ma pa da ni sa some play like that so that is the difference between like carnatic and western we have different you have this freedom restricted freedom i would say you cannot play like uh, some other raga and some other raga but like but you have within the raga you have all the freedom to play however you want so that that is one of the major uh, differences from western by western and carnatic I, i just wanted to add that and also in carnatic music the reason why i said we have a lot of rules um on how we express certain ragas because a lot of the ragas have the same notes but yeah. they sound very different um it it can also be uh, expressed in the order in which the notes are present um for example you can just have the same these four notes but that is nalina kanti okay you see i played the um the third note 1 3 2 4 that becomes a different raga but if i do 1 2 3 4 that is a different raga exactly. so since when especially when you're doing gamakams and stuff um the order in which you place these um right the order in which you place these swaras next to each other like you, it's basically a string of ragas right a gamakam is nothing but um you know you can play notes individually but when you string the notes together when you string them together it's called a gamaka for example is a note the notes go like this this is kalyani raga and these are the notes that are present in the raga but in a carnatic piece like or in a song you can hear it with the gamakas that sound like this so the so these are the nuances that i mentioned about um so the order in which you go for for example let me take one more raga bhairavi these are all very um, advanced level ragas that that very classical yeah very classical but advanced that that are taught at a very later stages when your guru feels like okay you can handle it because the same um, the same uh, raga will have two different notes while going it will have a different da while coming back it will have a different da okay um satya do you want to show do you yeah. know by the way this da while coming we we love different da this da like i i i usually say like this da is little bit sadder than that da like you know because in carnatic 
even in hindustani we feel in uh, the feelings of the baba of the raga so like the it's like something very, it's very happy happy yeah this uh, it's like i don't know in Kara, how do we say it in western term it's a minor note and a major i guess like i don't know but uh, yeah this is how the arana arana goes but if we play it in a plain way like they'll say okay bro you can join a cinema group and you can start playing cinema music please go away from carnatic music because we cannot play it like this because each raga has its own beauty the, those rules you can play but they won't they won't accept it as a proper bhairavi or pro- proper raga it, it has to be played like do you see the difference this is the note but that it's not the raga this is just a scale for to play the raga you need gamagams that is the difference in carnatic as well as uh, uh, carnatic and western i believe right yeah. so um and again the even in bhairavi you can see that um sagarega dagga appears twice in the arohanam itself the ga appears twice in the arohanam itself and even when you play the raga you have to um in in a lot of phrases you'll find you'll find the the combinations it will be different and in in the lo- in these ragas when you're going to sa like when you're going in the ascending scale you have to play the first the or the happy the and when you're descending when you're coming back from the octave from the last from the sa when you're coming in the descending scale you have to use the sadder the <laughs> or the minor the so um these are the things that um you know that you go upon like after when you advance to a particular level these are the things that you will understand and you'll know and i feel like these are the um intricacies or the beauty of that particular raga which is a part of why uh, gamakas are very essential um in um carnatic music because um it brings out the beauty you know um we the ragas are often sometimes called raga devate so or the raga angels so doing a particular raga within you know the rules that are specified to it or the way a raga is supposed to be expressed if you express it in that way it is very similar or equivalent to beautifying that angel so at least when i was learning that's how my teacher used to um express it so when you're doing it you are more mindful of not um making the wrong nuance of the raga and not just that even in the same like within the same notes they can appear in two different ragas right the same notes can appear in two different ragas but if you don't use the correct phrases it might end up sounding like a different one so which is part of why these gamakas are very important in uh, carnatic music so any anything like doubts or something guys anything you guys want to ask it's like a ppt i i say this will be explained by ananya <laughs> uh, guys if you have any doubts please turn on your mics yeah yeah, yeah. i understand that uh, you want to chat in the chat box but please turn on your mics it will be really fun and interesting to watch you people have an interactive session with the speakers of today's session um wanted to hear a piece uh, or a raga like uh, rag yaman on violin rag uh, yaman yeah yaman yaman do you know ananya i, I haven't learned it yet yeah i haven't learned it at same here but uh, 
but it's a wonderful raga no worries i yeah, don't I know mean, but i want practice i know more. that because yeah. violin i know it's so hard and learning the notes at that precision level is hard i know that okay now maybe next time We'll like some yash yeah, sure. any other thing that you can do Bro, okay i just googled rag yaman is i think kalyani oh that's kalyani in karnatak <laughs> no the nuance is changes right like if yeah. we can print it we can try to accompany like you they just they will definitely change from like hindustani to carnatic but um the equivalent of yaman is kalyani as i <laughs> googling currently no no uh, play anything that you can play uh, you know that is your most uh, practical that's thing kalyani kalyani is a very familiar raga that is start uh, oh, she's asking us to play something that okay. is you know under yeah. your hands like you can play it very you know you have practiced a lot or okay, uh, yeah. okay. we'll play a basic ninnu kori then your best version yeah yeah you, you know ananya like shall we play together or like Together will be a little difficult, right? No, no, it's Google Meet. Don't play it together. I mean, even if you want to do it in your best version, Google Meet will mess it up. So, yeah. Do you yeah. know Hindi? What? Do you no, know? No, they don't. <laughs> I can, I can, I know Hindi. Okay. So. No, you don't. <laughs> I will translate it for you. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Okay. So, yeah, I'm audious. Okay. I just play one of the varnams, the basic varnam. Mohan Rakam. Played mandolin. Just see how, like, it won't be same. Yes, it will yeah, be. Yeah, that, that is the beauty of Carnatic. You won't play exactly like uh, each. I told you, right? Yeah, they have different styles of playing it. I belong to like even in violin, there are uh, uh, like majorly five different styles. Each one of us will be playing differently. Right. So that's what. Now, Ananya, you just play the first like whatever I played. Okay. Somewhere. Yeah, I think they get the point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No reason. No reason. No uh, like, we can analyze, like for example, Arane, I'll just play. Ga ga ninu ko. Just play that. She plays like. I play like. So there are like if you observe carefully, there are many differences. So, but it's not like you have to play like this or it's not like you have to play like that. Whichever style, whichever. Even if I belong to a certain style, I can play differently if I want to play. So it's it's all upon like your imagination and your your way of perceiving the uh, raga. So yeah, this is one of the beauties of. A violin in general sounds more fluid and smooth, and because because of the presence of frets in uh, mandolin, it sounds more um, rigid and a little more um, in pieces than when compared to a violin. But with practice, you can make mandolin also sound. It can't be exactly as a violin, as fluid as a violin, but you can get somewhere close to it. And, uh, so, uh, what is the name of this raga? Mohana. Mohana. Okay, so yeah, the Hindustani equivalent is Bhopali. Sorry? Uh, what? The Hindustani equivalent is Bhopali. Oh, so okay. we have. Yeah, we have one rag called Bhopali. It uses the same notes. Okay. Oh. Yeah, it's painter running, major painter running. Uh, go on, Venkat. You want to say something? Uh, so, uh, basically, how do you tune your thing? What's the reference? Yeah, that's what. We have Tambura, right? These Tambura have, like, now it's in D. We can select C. Then with this reference, we tune our violin. So, uh, is it some electronic? Yeah, it's electronic, yes. Wait. wait. Okay. Or you can just find uh, Tambura it's online. An electronic thing, we can just. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so, Tambura basically gives us the, ba the, uh, the fifth and the first note. Yeah. The first and the fifth, fifth. of the previous octave. Oh. So, so we have the bass pa and the sa. So based on this, relative to this, we tune everything else. Okay, so you just see the resonance and do the things. Sorry? You just see the resonance, you try to resonate it and you do. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so, uh, so we have something known as metronome. So you said you will follow Tala. Uh, how is the speed matched? Um, so again, the speed of the song is also relative. Everything is relative in Carnatic. Um, so the speed is usually up to the singer or the um, instrument. Yeah. Yes. In whatever uh, speed that they have been practicing at. But usually when you start a piece, you start off in the very basic, very slow speeds and then at the performance, again, there's no set BPM at which you play. Yes, exactly. Oh. So even the percussionist oh. that is playing along with you will, for the first eight beats or the first four beats, they listen to you, they pick up the rhythm in which you're playing, and based on the rhythm, they continue to play along with you. So, as I said, at a Carnatic concert, everybody is clueless. Everybody is clueless. Actually, to be like put it into simple words, it's like a language. You don't like by heart these phrases and you use it everywhere you go. But you you change your way of speaking with uh, like with respect to others, what the others are speaking. Like exactly, we play something like the singer will sing. We listen it, listen to it. It's like a language. We understand it. We decode the swarams and we played played in our instrument within like. It is all muscle memory, like within say, it, it, it may sound very hard, but uh, if you do it again and again, it will just come automatically. So it's a like part language, of, okay. a part of, um, you know, um, Carnatic music journey in general for every Carnatic musician out there is ear training and rhythm. 
so these are things that you pick up along the way it's not just because i, I am a me melodic instrument it does not mean that um you know i don't have a sense of rhythm sense of rhythm is very important for any um for any musician i believe because if you're going to be playing in a crowd if you don't have a sense of um rhythm you won't be able to follow what the other person is doing and um sense of rhythm and um, your you pick up by ear right um so that's what he was mentioning so um my even my uh, even manlil shrinivas when he brought about the instrument he listened by ear which is what i said listening is a very big part of carnatic music even today all of the creative pieces or the manodharma i am encouraged to listen to a lot of the older or the legendary artists i am encouraged to listen to them listen to how they have expressed the the raga in their way pick it up from them by ear and try and play right so um ear training comes as a part of your musical journey and one main thing is carnatic musicians do not have notations we have we have notations but everything we sing and do is not written down it's on the spot more like um the note notes that you have just have the sargas and it's just for memory purposes the the notes that we have it will just have sari gama pa but that sari gama pa can be sung or expressed in a bunch of different ways and it is unique to each song right so majorly majorly you will not find a lot of carnatic musicians which have any notes or anything it is purely by memory right so the beats that you have um so there are a lot of songs that do not begin on the particular beat they begin off beat right those off beat are also um you know it's a part of the song right so when you have when you take one song it is common to everybody in the carnatic fraternity so let's say there's a, there's the song and it starts six beats from six or six beats off from the starting beat the the same six beats off will be followed by everybody in the carnatic fraternity so it's like a set rules and since it is very uniform for everyone we don't have any notes to like um remember the song it's it's all just through practice and memory okay so okay. thank you okay Uh, uh, you are the one who played uh, uh, violin with Kamu Koti Sir on Paradox, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, both of you seem familiar to me. You are from Paradox, and Ananya sister I have met during our labs, C programming labs, electronics stuff. Yeah. Maybe you you are in uh, which house? Uh, I'm I'm in I'm in Saranda house, but uh, I met her uh, as part of my labs uh, on campus. I'm from yeah, electronics. Yeah, yeah. we can stay in touch yeah sure uh actually if there is someone uh, who can help me i'm trying to compose music for one song you yeah, you're trying uh, to compose a music for a song uh, i mean i am trying to compose because i don't have any other option i have no one to compose for me no i don't like what uh, see, i see i am trying to play music for one song i need help of someone who can help me it's a sini song or uh, oh, no 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 it's a it's a carnatic song i am trying to make an western version oh okay uh, like what song ah that's some devotional song uh, i don't know the specifications of it but i have the clipping with me if we can connect later on maybe we'll stay in whatsapp and maybe we can like contact sure sure whatsapp yeah yeah you your uh, ananya has your number no 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 Yeah, then you just share your number we i'll just save yeah. it share it in the uh, share it in the chat yeah and then look uh, like we are not pro we are everyone is a learner okay we, so we cannot be like extremely perfect in like way of in no, music no. every even the ad most advanced people 
they are le- learners <laughs> they they will say uh, they are they are learners still learning carnatic music even like most advanced the those who have reached the zenith they will say i i find carnatic music endless so like we can if you want to speak about carnatic or any music we can speak for hours and hours so yeah it's, it was nice speaking to you guys yeah especially shankar uh, it's uh, very honored is 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 there is any musical session tomorrow uh, no no session tomorrow well uh, i just want to add something so uh, i did one lecture on hindustani music if you guys know but uh, the thing is that you guys said so many similar things that i said in the previous session that that is fascinating like uh, there are so many i always thought that in hindustani classical music and carnatic uh, music is a very different but uh to some extent it's very similar so that is very fascinating to me yeah right actually um a lot of ragas a lot of the ragas have um like in carnatic music they have a um hindustani equivalent also so like this there are a lot of scales that are similar but the way we express it is different that's that's pretty much um how Kar- carnatic and hindustani are different but majorly we it it all revolves around the same concepts so yeah exactly also uh, can you clear one thing that uh, can you can you explain the uh, o- the overall form of carnatic music when you perform um you mean like a concert yeah 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 in a, um, in a concert setup how do you perform what are the uh i mean stages that comes what are the pieces okay so um usually every carnatic um concert starts off with um what's starts off with a varnam it is as i said um as i had mentioned it is one of our lessons and they uh higher uh, or like bigger artists they choose a more complex varnam and um upcoming artists choose uh, varnams that are more familiar to them so the first piece is pretty much a varnam followed by um we have uh, they they do a ganesha song and then um there are almost around 2 to 3 pieces and uh, all of these pieces of um uh, will usually have involve a lot of raga alapana and uh, kalpana swarams and then we have the main piece which uh, the main piece usually takes up about almost uh, almost half an hour of the entire concert because that is the biggest and uh, we have the, the this main piece usually has a lot of elements added on to it such as the creative raga alapana the uh, kalpana swaram and then there is also something called the neravil that people do which is nothing but they take one phrase of the song and they try to um you know compose it in a different way it is set in in a in a way it's it's too much to like no. they want like okay. it's okay. Okay. probably that's that's okay yeah. fine no no, yeah, no, 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 no. Of elements it, it is it is the exactly the thing i want to know so oh, okay. you are okay. yeah okay. like yeah. is it like we are taking your time guys like we, if you want we can end the so session he asked his question was what are the things in a concert if you oh, take a okay, concert okay. what are the things that you do at a concert so i started off with varnam and then that there is usually a ganesha song and then we have a, around 3 3 or 2 or 3 songs and then we move on to the main song the main song has a lot of complex um elements added onto it um this this is where uh, artists like to play around usually and then we have what are known as small tukdas where we have um fun or like energetic songs that usually Abang come Abang. towards right in the in the main part is where the tani avartanam comes uh, tani avartanam is nothing but um, the part is play alone yeah a 5 minutes to a 10 minute session specifically devoted to the percussionists right sorry 
a five minute to 10 minute session which is specifically devoted to the percussionists and then um followed by way of tukdas or small songs and then we end it with um atillana or just another fun song so this is how a concert usually goes okay thank you thank you so much yes um if we don't have any other questions we would wrap it uh, up you have anything you uh, like the instruments uh, instrumentalists uh, you can't play without someone uh, having uh, like putting the talas uh, during the concert right yes uh, since uh, vocalists they can manage their rhythm by themselves because they have the talam on their hands but instrumentalists especially for beginner instrumentalists we require somebody who is putting the talam in front of us yeah yeah so also also one thing, yeah. what yeah, sure. also one thing i want to know that uh, oh, can you guys please share uh, some of the uh, maestros name in this field uh maybe it I'll can put be it in the in chat the... maybe yeah okay. yeah yeah sure sure yeah i mean i know of only vikubin akram <laughs> so no she has played with zaya yeah <laughs> obviously <laughs> and so yeah please uh, share some of uh, wait yeah. so in in the entire karnatic rabanati or like to our specific instrument uh you can you can share both I mean, I have heard of yeah, you, Srinivas, and right. yeah, uh, I have heard of him. Um, like other popular uh, people in um, Carnatic music, there are again there are various sections in which violin. As far as I know, one of the uh, most popular artists currently is uh, Kanya Kumari Amma, and uh, for Kona Padi Vaidya Nandan sir, yes. um and then we have uh, ms amma vocalist ms subalakshmi um these are the legends of um carnatic music as you can say um uh balamurli krishna maharaj bram santanam right i lalguri sir was uh, for violin right okay i think maybe it's getting late Yeah, we're thirty minutes off. Yeah, thirty minutes off. Maybe we can wrap it up here. Any other yeah, questions? Yeah. You can uh, post it in. Does Accord have a communication channel anywhere? If it has, like we can just post it you there. We can post it there, and we'll answer the questions. Yeah, we, have, we have a WhatsApp group. We have a G space. If you guys have any queries, 